You never know, Ohana. Oh, oh my, balls. oh yeah. Super low maintenance. Oh, you can keep them outside. The colors really just pop. They don't need a heater. And so you don't really need a filter. <gasps> No, no. Cool, and it works. Why are Madaka so expensive? Aloha, my Ohana. It is your boy back with another aquatic adventure. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me be the first to give you a nice big warm aloha and welcome. On this channel, we talk about everything aquatics, whether it be freshwater, saltwater, gold and koi fish ponds. We do local fish store tours, fish rescues, DIY projects, and product reviews in the hobby. Now, I am super excited for this video, Ohana. As you can probably see in the thumbnail, we're about to meet one of the local Madaka breeders here in Northern California. We're gonna talk Madaka. Well, sorry, if you guys don't know what Madaka is, better known as the Japanese rice fish. Now, he uh, has a club that they get together once a month, or maybe once every couple months, with various local breeders. They do trades, they do sales. You guys are gonna learn so much about the Madaka, and you know your boy's been on this Madaka kick. So, we're gonna go see his breeding projects, what types of Madaka he has, Ohana, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am super excited, man. Let's get inside here. Let's go meet the man, the myth, the legend. All right, my Ohana, this is my boy Jackson. We're in Benicia, California. He has been breeding Madaka for over three years. He's got some beautiful strands, a, a wide variety of different colors. I can't wait. I don't know much about them, especially the names and, and what they're gonna grow up and look, but he's got many breeding projects here. Uh, his technique on breeding is super cool and unique. You guys are gonna get inspired by this little fish. I'm telling you guys right now. So right off the bat, Jackson, thank you, my man, for having me, man. Of course, yeah, it's yeah. a pleasure. It's a complete honor. Thank you for inviting the Ohana here to your home. Uh, we are gonna talk some Madaka. Now, the first question I have, which a lot of people out there are probably gonna wonder is, uh, why Madaka? Why did you choose Madaka out of all the freshwater fish? What was what was it about the Madaka that really grasped you? Honestly, they're just peaceful. You know, I yeah. I, I was raising uh, a couple other things out here in my projects, and uh, and uh, I just kept gravitating towards the Madaka and and was more focused on them than anything else. And then the next year it was going to do more, and then now we're. Well, now we are where we are. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about the club that you guys got going on, the Madaka Club. Sure. What is it called exactly? Sure, San Francisco Bay Area Madaka Society. Oh, yeah. very cool, very cool. Um, we got probably about 150 local people right now. Wow. Um, and growing, so we keep adding more and more every day. That is so cool. Now, do you have to be a member to show up at these events? No, no, no. Open to everybody. Whoa. Um, yeah, just... Just show up and hang out and enjoy with us, yeah. And then you could actually make purchases there too, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, we can buy Madaka. And if you guys are interested in purchasing any Madaka from him, DM him on Instagram. He'll get back to you, but he also has some other things that he sells that'll help you breed your Madaka, man. I'm telling you, he's got some stunners. Yeah. I love how low maintenance they are. Course, yeah, super yeah. low maintenance you can keep them outside they don't need a heater and really you don't really need a filter either as long as you have some like what floating plants and some aquatic plants in there that help filter the water it, a little yeah. bit oh you need Dude, insane and you see how much fry he has in one of these totes it's crazy i mean we're talking what hundreds uh, thousands there's probably hundreds I'm, there yeah, yeah, I mean, that, yeah that one there has got a ton of fry so let me flip this camera around because I know you guys are eager to see how his setup is it is super cool super unique and it's kind of like repli replicating the Japanese style right how That's they do right. it yeah, yeah. so what he did was he went on like uh, various sites and you know you're checking out different types of styles how they breed um, in Japan right right yeah yeah I mean Instagram was a huge help okay um, you know just got on there and started searching around and uh, looking at all the various setups and for me it worked well because I have limited space yeah. and, uh, and you know seeing how they did it uh I just tried to copy what I did, and, and man, it's really, it's yeah, really worked out. It's been an explosion, so. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm getting inspired, man. I'm like, whoa, this would be so cool to do a, a nice little breeding setup in the backyard or something with Madaka, but like, I got so much going on with my pond and, and, and Tiki Lounge. So you guys out there at home are gonna get inspired. So let's stop talking, let me flip this around, and I'm gonna let my boy Jackson take over on the different uh, names of uh, 
And the colors, man, the colors are insane on this Madaka. All right, Jackson, so what is in this tote? <laughs> so on this first one, we have uh, Diamond Dust. Diamond Dust have uh, more of a clear bluish body. Oh my gosh, look at that guy the, there. With uh, the real strong silver lame on their back. Oh, it's almost like that gene ring for like a koi. Oh, Diamond Dust, I get it. Oh, look, here they come. Oh, MGZ, look at them, huh? Ooh, Diamond Dust. The next one here, we have uh, Yohiki. And Yohiki is, um, they're like the orange ones that you would see at the store, sort of. You know? Oh, okay. Like the, you know, that's just the, More the common? That's right. Yeah, oh, right. gotcha, okay. We'll entice them. Yeah, that's right. Look at that. Is that special Madaka food? Um, or actually, they this just... is just uh, Hikari, Look at that. Oh, okay. Uh, fancy guppy. You can see them. Oh, so pretty. Look at them all. Wow, they're, a, they're pretty, man. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're like a fuchsia beautiful. almost. They look, whoa, super cool. You should probably be outside. Um, when you get them outside in the sunlight, the colors really just pop. Yeah. They really need that need that sun to get that color out for that of them. Oh, that makes sense. In this tote, this is my uh, Miyuki Juveniles from the ones that I had bred. Whoa. You can kind of see them. They're super yeah. stunners, man. Look at that. You can see them back over there. Look at them. Whoa. Look how pretty those are. So these are the babies from uh, my breeding group. Wow. These are probably about... Uh, about two months old, maybe a little bit younger. Wow, these are babies and they're stunners. Look yeah. at them. Oh my gosh, I got to zoom in on these. Look at them. It's almost like a metallic, man. They really pop. Yeah, the Muki have the uh, the white body and mine have a have a bluish like hue to their backs. And they also will develop this uh, kind of like a black Y almost from the back of the head down to the tail. On some wow. of my birds at least, yeah. Oh, these are beautiful. Wow, look at, look at there's so many of them in this one. Yeah, yeah probably smokes. in this one. Uh, 60, 70 in this seven gallon tote. Wow, <laughs> this is a seven gallon tote. So you can kind of see the setup. And this is exactly, kind of it's a replica of how they breed in Japan. This tote, there's nothing here. Okay. But I will tell you, it's a perfect example of what happens when you're breeding outside. In this tub, I have about six or seven fry. Okay. I've never put fish in there and I've never put eggs in there, and I've never put anything what? in there. What? There's just fry in there. How does that happen? I, what Things the travel, heck? I guess. When you have things close by. <laughs> by air? So right now I have a so question maybe, mark on the front, and we're just gonna wait oh, and see. Oh, that is hilarious. See what happens and Maybe what this to. tote, somebody spit some fry over here in this tote. Yeah, I mean, you know. These are uh, Orochi, or the black type. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh, I can kind of see them down there. Oh, wow. So, there, there they are. These are the black type. Um, these are these are new, so I don't have any of these breeding yet, but I'm hoping. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So the success you feel uh, with Madaka is keeping them outside versus in an aquarium indoors, right? Something about, you know, the sun obviously really helps them out a lot, um, but also uh, I feel like the temperature swings help them too. Oh yeah, um, If you that have them sense. inside and they're warm constantly, the females will breed, breed, breed all the time, um, and you know, eventually breed themselves out. I feel like uh, outside they get the cold snap, they slow down, they get a break, warms back up, they get to go again. So, gosh, these are beautiful here. These what are these? Ones. These are the. Uh, this is my adult group of Miyuki. Oh, okay. Yeah. The adult versions of that one we were just That's looking right. at. Yeah. Wow. I've look had how this pretty. Group for uh, three years, this is the first group I had um, that started look everything. At that. So. And if you, this is, these are a full grown Ohana, mm -hmm. and these are probably about an inch and a half, maybe? Um, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that. Maybe that. Yeah, look how pretty. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. These are gorgeous, dude. Oh, I love these Madaka here. Oh, I, I gotta say, these are, gosh, kind of my favorite right now. I mean, there's still a lot more to look at, guys. Wow. Those are beautiful, yeah. A little less than an inch and a half, so that's mm -hmm. full grown, guys, so you guys understand the size. None of these really have filters, like you just have an air system, that's I noticed. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, wow, I can see these, the air, right there are the air hoses, I'm the airline. The whole airline system. Oh yeah. I've got uh, a linear pump tucked away down here. Okay. This. Oh, this nice. Pump. There it is. Yep, and you run everything out the side. You drill some holes and just yeah, run the hoses. It's fully open on the yeah. side. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, gotcha for sure. And uh, it just pumps out the back and runs up the sides. Wow, look at that! Yeah. Cool setup. See that? 
and it's putting air in every single one of these. Look at, he even has the buckets. I'm sure you guys noticed. And then these are seven gallon totes. These ones are probably- Oh, look at these guys. My favorite ones. Are they really? Yeah, oh my gosh, the, uh, they're like a tricolor, huh? Yeah, Sensioku <gasps> Tomarin. Oh, M Jeezy. Uh, they have a, uh, a transparent skin and then all of the colors come from underneath. Oh my yeah. gosh, look at that Ohana. See, I told you, man, these are gonna be more popular than the guppy. Right, Jackson? Oh, man, I, I think I'm, so. I'm telling you, got, look at these, the the variety, you know what I mean? I mean, fancy guppies are fancy guppies, and I'm not bad-mouthing them at all, but like, I'm telling you, these fish here are so versatile, oh, low yeah. maintenance, I mean, there's more pros than cons when it comes to this fish. They breed like crazy, you can have them outside. I mean, Yeah, these ones that. specifically, uh, this group breeds like crazy really i have uh probably <gasps> uh, i probably have about 500 fry from them right now wow um, and eggs every day are you serious yeah, oh yeah and since he has so much you never know ohana your boy may be leaving with some i'm just saying be prepared and the cool thing about these is if you're interested, like I said earlier in the video, Ohana, give my boy Jackson a holler, DM him. Look at these, imagine these, Ohana. I mean, these are a beautiful centerpiece fish. Put them in a nice like, you know, aquascape pot. Um, sure, yeah. the, the pots that you can get probably like at Home Depot or something, right? That's right, yeah. The clay easy. pots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can decorate it. You can decorate them with some floating plants, submersible plants. I mean, yeah, look just... at these. Oh my God, Jackson, these. Wow, dude. All I have to say is wow. These are the juveniles from my uh, Yohiki group. Okay. The oranges. Yeah, look they're at them. They're still little. small, but they're growing up. Look how little. These ones are interesting because they've been throwing me some short body variations. Oh, I just, I did see one that was kind of stubby looking. And they look real stubby and yeah, funny. And yeah, and I was like, wow, interesting. I thought maybe it was not fully developed. Yeah, every time I see them, I feel like uh, it's like, like a floating chicken nugget. Or yeah, something. that's interesting <laughs> though. They start off, you know, uh, light, but eventually with the sun and, you know, you feed them good and raise uh -huh. them up, they're gonna brighten up real. Gosh, look at, talk about fry. OMGZ, look at all these, dude. Yeah, these are the, uh, Fry from the the last one, the tricolors, the sensor. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, all these wow. guys are probably. Look at all of uh, them. About a month and a half, almost two months. I saw some stunners in this right here. These ones here are uh, Yozakura Rame. They got some fancy names. Right. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Look at they right there. We can see. They have. Their... Uh, they're more of a. Oh, look at that. A clear, almost white, but depending on what you keep them in, they look different. Oh, so gotcha. For me, because they have them in a dark container, mm -hmm. their body darkens up a lot, almost almost black, um, and then they have a real nice like silver, almost purple lame on their. Body oh yeah, you can kind of see that purple right there. Yeah, it's real pretty. That is not. Oh my gosh. Yep, you can kind of see. I don't know. The camera is showing like some teal, purple, right. lavender. Oh All my gosh! Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Very pretty. There's a good shot right there of one. Oh, come on, focus, baby. Focus, oh, there you go. Oh, wow, that one looks like maybe it's had, it has eggs. Is that possible uh -huh. or no? Oh yeah, that female, she, you oh, see yeah. she's definitely carrying oh. a clutch underneath. Oh yeah, you can see it, look at that. You see it, Ohana, see the eggs? Oh yeah, that clutch, oh. There's too many things to zoom on. <laughs> oh, wow, that was cool. Look at them, look at them. <gasps> so pretty. Now, I noticed these these little, these scrubby things. What what are these right here? Um, these are uh, breeding mops. They oh, they're so, breeding mops. That's right. Yeah. So what uh, they have just these little things that hang down, um, and oh. the fish will swim through. Let's see if we can find some eggs here. Okay. And you come here and you check these on the daily, kind of a deal. Yeah, or? yeah. I'll come and I'll check them on the daily and see. No what kidding. Happens. And the eggs just um, attached to these, huh? They do. Here, I just switched these. We'll go to this. Okay. One here. All right. Oh, here we go. We got some yeah. up here. Wow, you got a ton of these. So if you look here. Whoa! Yeah, you can. I just saw. Are those those little like little gel? Got tons of eggs here. here oh. We go. Oh yeah. They look oh. like these little. There we go. Little oh my. Balls. Oh yeah. And one of those is an egg. What? Just one. Yeah. Each one is an egg. Whoa. So there's probably. Just on this scrubber alone. Oh my gosh. Know, 30, 40 eggs, something like that. Wow, I was wondering what these were. Here. Here's one, this one's got even more on it, as you can see. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. man. So, 
Yeah, that is super cool. Whoa, so every single one of these have scrubbies in them and these things, do you, do you sell these or do, where do, do you get them? Yeah. Oh, you make them. I make all these myself. Whoa, so guys, he makes them. Oh, well, hold on guys, let me just turn around here. Look it, there they are. Look it, if you guys are interested, he actually sells these too as well. So like I said, DM him on his Instagram. I'll put it on the uh, screen. Those are super cool and it works guys. It is right. proof. Look at every single one of these. He has them in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> these are the breeding machines right here. I was wondering what they were. I had no idea. I seen them. Look at, they're in all of his totes. Look at oh, yeah. eggs galore. Oh, <laughs> and what's down over here in this so in this here. one down here, I'm trying to make. Uh, oh, is this a secret? I'm, yeah, my secret project. Is this the secret project? That we'll let out here. I'm just trying to do a, a Miyuki red crap, uh, red cap cross. I was trying to see if I could get the blue shine from the Miyukis with the orange heads on the red caps, and they're. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they're getting close. So this is this is the group from the first generation, and that is super um, cool. They're breeding like crazy. This whole bucket here is is hatched fry. Oh. Probably, really? I don't know, 200 fry just in this little tiny bucket. Whoa, thing. you can see them right there. Oh, honey, look how small the fry is. Yeah, they're very tiny. Whoa, that's wild. I'll zoom out so you guys get a, a size perspective. Yeah. Whoa. So when I'm when I'm when I do do the uh, check for eggs. I'll just pull the mops and if they have eggs on them, uh -huh. like this one here. So you got my eggs on there. Let me see. Let me see if I can see zoom can in. Oh yeah, there. right there. That's a nice egg. Yeah, some nice, some nice healthy looking oh, eggs on yeah. there. Um, I'll just take them and I'll pull them and I'll stick them in the bucket. And it probably takes anywhere from a week to 12, 14 days sometimes at to the hatch. most. But to hatch, wow. it, it depends on the temperature. So when it's warmer, uh, which normally it's warmer on here. Yeah. <laughs> it will, uh, it helps them hatch a little up. quicker. Oh, yeah, yeah. interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. And is, is there a certain season or there, are they laying eggs all they, year round? They're prob they're mostly in the warm time. So okay. yeah, starting, starting spring and then they'll lay all the way into like late fall around here cause it's warmer. Gotcha. And then when it gets like, they prefer colder water, cooler water. Um, or does it matter? Or they're honestly so low maintenance. They, they can fluctuate to any type. These oh. guys can live anywhere from being under a sheet of ice wow. to up to like a hundred degrees. They Whoa. they really don't have a, super durable. Yeah, they they just last. Just so you guys know, we're in Northern California and it gets hot. I'm talking triple digit weather out here. Right. And when it gets a little too hot, let's show the Ohana what you do, what you built for these guys. This is super cool. Yeah, Watch this, guys. Shade here, so Look at this shade hot. system. Look at that. Right rolls it down oh, it. i love it it keeps every toe covered keep are, are you scared of um birds of prey or anything like that back here um does it even cross your mind or do you see anything uh, i don't know raccoons in, possums i don't even in know in my neighborhood so small um i'm really close to a downtown which is good kind okay. of keeps some of the animals out yep that's uh, true that is true i have had raccoons once um that's why i put these spikes on my fence so oh I you put, got spikes i put spikes across my whole fence top uh here you can see them. oh yes <laughs> heck yes like fort knox here keep man raccoons out oh and yeah and I he's got an owl my fake owl that heck keeps yeah. the birds away so <laughs> oh yeah I he's prepared keep, i didn't even see this guy yep, yeah you're yeah. prepared you're prepared I try to keep the try a little bit and actually these flags help too just something wiggling keeps birds out oh yeah i love know? i love the koi flags in here is my uh I have a couple goldfish that I keep in here. Okay. Yeah, I used to do all planted tubs and they're really pretty. Yeah, um, this is gorgeous though. I love the floating plant. I love this. I love this plant here. This is nice. Making a nice little uh Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, look at these beautiful so orandas. Some, look at that little chunk, huh? Woo wee. Oh, mm -hmm. she's a pretty one. There's also three ranchus in here. Oh, wow, you got some ranchus in here too. I also keep Madaka in here. Um Sometimes Ooh. they might not be throwing the colors that you want. Okay. Um, but they're perfectly fine and perfectly healthy. And, yeah. You know, so instead of letting them stay in my gene pool, basically, mm -hmm. I'll take them out and I'll put them here. Okay, these are uh, the, the coal, the ones you coal? Right. For, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, with all of my fish, um, I've kept them uh, strictly line bred. 
so I never nice. cross them over unless it's intentional. Yeah, yeah. Which you're doing your little project yeah, over there my on the side. Project. I have a quick question for you. I know a lot of, of people are gonna ask this question or want to know the answer to this question. So the million dollar question that I'm sure everybody wants to know, including me, is why are Madaka so expensive for these little fish? I've seen a pair of Madaka go for like $110 and I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. I've seen some variations uh, go in the thousands for just a pair. That is crazy, yeah. man. That's like buying a koi fish, it, you know what I mean? It really is, yeah. I feel like the prices are there one, because they're not easy to get. Here in the US, we only have, I don't know, a handful of types. Yeah. Compared to Japan, where the breeders have access to tons. Yeah, I do see some insane pictures on so, Instagram. I'm like, what yeah. type of Madaka is that? I've never seen them before. A lot of it has to do with the rarity of getting them. Bloodline? Probably the work in keeping the bloodline, mm. because the, uh, the more the colors are extravagant, the harder it is to keep the bloodline straight. Gotcha, and you they're know? probably coming from reputable uh, koi farms in Japan. There's tons of Madaka yeah. farms in Japan, yeah. That's Sizes wild. you wouldn't imagine. Uh, oh, just couldn't... acres of tubs. Oh, wow, yeah. just Madaka. Just Madaka. Whoa, that's insane. So if you guys were wondering, that is the reason why. That that makes sense though. You know, rarity, hard to get, yeah. and the bloodline. That's it's It's basically like, either buying a dog outside of Walmart, somebody is selling in a box, or going AKC papers with a bloodline championship yeah. line, and that's basically what it is. So mm -hmm. that makes sense, man, that makes sense. That is nutsos. I love this net, dude. Did you make this net? Yeah, I, did. I made this net. I. Uh... Oh, it looks like a, the perfect scooper for Madaka, too. Yeah. Uh... Look at that, it's a wide base. Real wide, make it just go right in. It's perfect for all these uh, smaller tubs. Wow. Now, do you sell these? I do sell these. You yeah. do sell them. Oh, these are yeah. super dope, man. They, they almost look like a traditional style net. You know, I don't even know what a traditional net looks like. Oh, you got different sizes. I, I make different ones. Whoa, that so is, is super, that super cool. Um, and there's something uh, that people can purchase on that's right yeah i have a, i have an instagram account it's okay. called uh, sakura tamos oh okay cool. um tamo is is the name for uh just basically net in japan oh i uh, like it so so i've made a couple different little sizes look at that um, that is super cool but fully handmade uh, impressive so man impressive i'm uh i'm doing custom nets for anybody Very that wants cool I mean, man look at those i gotta yeah. get another shot at those look at that that is super sick man oh i love it three different sizes and i can make any size Gosh. um any shape yeah really that is um, super cool so yeah. i love it damn jackson those are nice dude yeah thank you well, my Ohana, now you guys know why I have this like new love for this Japanese rice fish or better known as the Madaka. Um, insane. Uh, you got to see some different variety of Madaka, the colors, uh, breeding. You know, we got educated here from my boy Jackson, uh, the way his setup is with the air and uh, the little scrubbies that you can actually purchase. Probably put a picture, a couple pictures probably of his Instagram here on the actual page itself or on this video. So you guys feel free, DM him if you're interested in any of the Madaka or the nets or the scrubbies for breeding. You know what, I gotta ask my boy Jackson and something hey so when is the next madaka club meeting going down um approximately so, yeah so the next meet for the uh san francisco barrier madaka society is going to be uh, about mid to late october okay. we're going to get one more in before the cold snap yeah okay that makes sense follow my boy on instagram okay then because yeah. all that information will be there um, and I'll repost it in my story too as well. We linked up on IG and that's why I'm so happy we did too, man, because man, this was an awesome tour, man. Thanks for coming. Uh, no, man, man I appreciate it, man. Yeah. The honor is all mine and I'm sure the Ohana appreciate you too. Hey, don't forget, leave some comments down below on the Madaka. Tell me what you guys think about the Madaka. I mean, it is kind of new to the States. It's been around for many generations in Japan, um, but the variances, I love them. The color, they're small, low maintenance. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Out door you can put them in a nice beautiful pot and it looks like it looks decorative but then you have fish in there so insane i have plans to do something with some madaka soon so you guys will get a glimpse of that you already know ohana other than that it's a wrap here in benicia california jackson thank you my man thank you for coming i appreciate yeah, the love yeah. hey ohana don't forget 
Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. It's a notification bell. Click that bell, turn it on. It's just gonna notify you when I upload a new video. And definitely go follow my boy on IG and DM him, okay? Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next video. Much love and aloha. Oh.